What is the Spear of Destiny? And is it a myth or a historical relic? What role has the Spear played in history, if any? What major figures in history have allegedly used it for their own purposes? And if it does exist, where is the Spear of Destiny now? According to the New Testament, the Spear of Destiny was wielded by a Roman soldier. The Gospel of John, verse 19, 33 to 34 states, But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. That soldier, according to extra-biblical accounts, was the centurion, Casca Rufio Longinus. He pierced the side of Jesus Christ while he was on the cross and supposedly cursed to roam the world as an immortal until the second coming. This named Roman centurion, Longinus, and his connection was only stated in clerical liturgy in the 12th century based upon prior Greek writings. According to the myths, the Spear of Destiny, also known as the Holy Lance, was passed down through a line of kings and emperors after being found during the Crusades. However, other stories are that it was always in the hands of the Church, hence its earlier involvement in historical myth before the Crusades. Regardless of the many claims of this relic being in various locations and in the hands of various rulers, it is an interesting story. It was said to have given many rulers the ability to control their own destiny and bring success to military leaders. The legend also states that whoever possesses the spear holds the destiny of the world in his hands. Rumors abound that it was held by Constantine the Great, Justinian, Charles Martel, passed on to his grandson Charlemagne, King Sigismund, Napoleon Bonaparte, and even Adolf Hitler to name a few. All of these leaders were believed to have been given victories blessed by God due to the power of the spear. However, in total contradiction to this claim, a relic described as the Holy Lance in Rome is preserved beneath the dome of St. Peter's Basilica, although the Catholic Church has never claimed its authenticity. The lance is also mentioned in the so-called Bravarius at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This is attested to by Cassiodorus, circa 1485 to 585, as well as by Gregory of Tours, circa 538 to 594, although neither case has been proven. In 615, Jerusalem was captured by Khosros II. According to the Chronicon Pashel, the point of the lance had been broken off and given to Nicetas, who took it to Constantinople. He is said to have placed it in the Hagia Sophia, and later moved to the Church of the Virgin of the Pharos. During the June 1098 siege of Antioch, a monk named Peter Bartholomew reported that he had a vision in which St. Andrew told him that the Holy Lance was buried in the Church of St. Peter in Antioch. After much digging, Bartholomew allegedly discovered a lance. Despite the doubts of many, including the papal legate Adamar of Lepuy, the discovery of the Holy Lance of Antioch inspired the starving crusaders to break the siege and secure the city. In the 18th century, Roman Cardinal Prospero Lambertini claimed the Antiochian lance was a fake. This point of the lance was set in an icon, was acquired by Emperor Baldwin II of Constantinople, who later sold it to Louis IX of France. The point of the lance was enshrined with a crown of thorns in the Senate Chapel in Paris. Another story is that Mehmet II took it in 1453 when he captured Constantinople and later fell into the hands of Sultan Bayezid II. Bayezid supposedly gave it to Pope Innocent VIII in 1492 as payment to keep his brother and challenger to the throne hostage. That was somewhat fortunate for the brother. As was customary in Ottoman politics, rulers usually killed off their siblings to remove them as a threat to their power. During the French Revolution, these relics were moved to the Bibliothèque Nationale, but the spear point disappeared. One story is that it was acquired by Napoleon, while another claims the Revolutionary Council in 1794 gave it to Baron von Hugel for the Vienna Museum for safekeeping. The last major world figure who was supposed to have had possession was Adolf Hitler, following many kings and emperors throughout history, all men of destiny. 
The spear, just like the Holy Grail, held a special fascination for Hitler and his followers as they mapped out their rule of Germany and later Europe, if not the world. Hitler led his troops into Austria, the first stage of his plan of a world conquest. One of his first acts was to remove the Spear of Destiny from the Hofburg Museum in Vienna. The spear was allegedly buried beneath Nuremberg Fortress, where it was discovered on the day that Hitler shot himself in the Berlin bunker on April 30, 1945. The supposed relic was recovered together with other treasures of the Imperial Collection, and on January 6, 1946, these were returned to the Hofburg Museum. Placing science into the story, Robert Feather, an English metallurgist, tested the spear tip, the gold band, and the nail attaching it. He concluded that the spear tip dated from no earlier than the 7th century AD, but the nail was consistent in style and composition to a Roman nail of the crucifixion period. Regardless of the truth, whether fact or fiction, history or hoax, the legend of the spear and other holy relics were responsible for the religious fervor that defined the early Middle Ages. Rulers believed that they had the real thing. Their successes attributed to divine intervention. Empires such as the Carolingians and Bourbons were built around it. So, where is the real Spear of Destiny today, if it in fact actually exists? Who knows, but like the Shroud of Turin, it will provide writers, historians, and conspiracy theorists with a lot of material to keep them busy forever. Perhaps even myself. We hope you enjoyed this segment of Forgotten History. Please click like and subscribe for free. And please stay tuned and be engaged and informed. Send us comments if you have questions or even show ideas. And we will respond to all requests and comments as soon as we can. Thank you.